Oh, Lord, have mercy. I am by quoting scripture. All this Noahide business, too. Yeah, get you over guys, it. Get guys... over the Guys, let me tell you something about the Noahide. Mm -hmm. Get over it. Guys, don't worry about the Noahide lines. This is a, did you ever hear of Flat Earth, the Mandela Effect? This is about the same thing. It's going nowhere. It has nowhere to go. The real problem you have is the beast kingdom that's going to rise. I mean, I have to just tell you the truth because there's so much of this garbage out there on the Internet that uh, people are confused by. And, it, and they really do. They get confused. The people who hate Jews, the anti-Semitics who hate Jews also hate Christians. They start out by hating Jews and then they turn on the church. Watch what I'm telling you. Every person, there's people out there who say they're part of the body of Christ. They attack the Jews, attack the Jews, attack the Jews. And then you know who they turn on next? You. They turn on the Christians. Because if you Christians don't do what they say or follow their ideal of thinking, they turn on you. And they begin to blame you and say that you're a partner, and that you're some kind of uh, Zionist, uh, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they lump you in. Guess what? Guess who's going to do that in the last days? Study your Bible. Who's going to go after the Jews and the Christians in the end time? Who is it, Heidi? Who's going to make war with the saints and the holy people? The Antichrist. So this narrative you're hearing is actually the Antichrist doctrine coming from the lips of those who say they are a part of the body of Christ. Unfortunately, for whatever reason or series of reasons, various conspiracy theorists have concluded that the United States' historic support of the state of Israel and the Jewish people has gone too far and concluded that certain Orthodox Jewish authorities are preparing the way for the persecution and even execution of followers of Yeshua the Messiah. By establishing the Noahide laws as regulations to be followed by American citizens, which includes prohibitions on idolatry and blasphemy, it is thought that the Jewish influence on American politics will lead to believers being persecuted and even killed for having faith in a Messiah that Judaism corporately rejects. This will probably also lead to the rise of the anti-Messiah or Antichrist, who as the false Messiah will use the Noahide laws as a means to persecute believers as well. This conspiracy theory presumes a great deal about the Orthodox Jewish influence on global politics and is rooted in a great deal of anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist sentiment, certainly extending back to the late 19th century. And I believe this is what the reason for the angst against the Noahide laws really are, here we have these God's laws for humanity that everyone agrees is wonderful. But the minute you call them Noahide laws, now all of a sudden panic sets in. And it's like, oh no, those are mentioned in the Talmud. And so they can't be right. It's rabbinic. Well, I really believe those who are opposed to the Noahide laws really are just very anti-Semitic. That's what it comes down to. Because how can you be opposed to God's laws? Uh, I mean, if something is written in the Encyclopedia Britannica, if the Noahide laws are there, does that mean now we're opposed to Encyclopedia Britannica? Right now, we have almost 8 billion people in the world. 99.999% of them are Reshaim Gmurim. Christians, almost 2.5 billion of them, all idolaters. What do you think? Kadosh Bukhus thinks they're Tzadikim? Someone who had, if he keeps the seven laws of Bnei uh, Noach. The Noahide Noach laws. Do you see Jews and non-Jews as the same? No. Okay, explain. I see Jews as the chosen nation. Okay. They, uh, they were chosen by uh, Hashem. They, uh, uh, Does that make Jews better? Makes Jews different. Okay. Righteous Gentiles have a place in heaven, yes or no? 
Yes, 100%. So they have a place in heaven, right? For sure. And is there a difference to someone who's, who's Christian or Muslim, or does it matter what kind of Gentile they are? No, if they're doing what they're, what they're supposed to do in, in, their, in their role of like uh, helping to fix the world and understanding that the Jewish nation has an important part in, in doing that, and people who are just keeping the seven archive laws, what, what are we talking about? Okay, so people Jewish who save Jews, obviously, you're gonna, I assume you're going to say yes. Let's just take people, no, they didn't save Jews, they're just nice, good people. They well, why did God give us the seven Noah high laws? Nice, good people who mm -hmm. are keeping uh, are keeping seven archive laws, or yeah, I mean, like good good people should. Will they, they just go to heaven? Them. Why not? What Why about atheists? Not? Throwing atheists. that in. Atheists. Yeah. Atheists go to heaven. Yeah. So depending on what they, how do they connect their lives? Somebody who's an atheist that ha had known better, had known or had known that. An atheist that, that keeps the seven Noahide laws. Yeah. An atheist that keeps the seven high neck laws. Uh, that's interesting because one of those laws is to believe, believe in God, God. <laughs> and to believe in the Jewish people so as, as the chosen nation, <laughs> and to believe in the Jewish people so as, as the chosen nation. How does the Torah view non-Jews? Does the Torah view non-Jews as inferior to Jews? Well, we are the chosen people. We're, we are racist. We are racist. We are racist. Meaning that we know God chose us to be his people. Um, we know that non-Jews were created for a purpose, the God's creations, and they have their place in the world. Every person in the world has to keep the seven Noah laws. Every person in the world has to think why he was put in the world and explore the reason he's here. Think why he was put in the world and explore the reason he's here. And what, if there's a God, if there is a God, what does he expect from us? I respect you, respect me. doesn't have to respect you. Huh? doesn't have to respect you. That is the right thing. Are you Jewish? Do you want to honor God? That is the godly thing to do. We respect one another. The godly thing to do is to kill you. The godly thing is to kill me. That's right. That's yes? what the Torah says. The Torah says to kill us. The Torah says that idol, uh, people who worship idols such as yourself, when there is a Sanhedrin... To kill us. Yes. Okay. That's what the Torah so says. So we know how the Jewish people feel about Christians, yes? That you Christians discriminate are, against Christians. Christians are idol worshippers. You discriminate the against Torah Christians. The Torah says that Christianity is idol worship. Let me ask you. You worship three let gods. Let me ask you. Not only Goyim, also Jews. They don't think he's Jewish. He's not a Jew. The Torah says to kill him, also if he needs it. To kill him? Okay. Right. Okay. What is the law? What is the Torah? I'm saying. As it is explained by the Ramban in the Chidushim to Masechet Makot Daf, of Teth, and as it is explained by other Rishonim, the assumption is, when it comes to a non-Jew who we do not know, someone we haven't met or we don't know much about him, the assumption is that he does not live according to the Sheva Misvot B'nai Noach. He doesn't keep the seven Noahide laws. And therefore, essentially, this person is Hayav Mitha. He is guilty of a capital offense, whether it's this one or that one, whether it's stealing or, or adultery or murder or Avodah Zarah or what have you. Abu Dazara, of course, was perhaps the most common, the most standard, the most uh, ubiquitous avera, which you could also see with your own eyes, not one of those activities which people tend to uh, do behind closed doors. It was a well-known fact, these people worship Abu Dazara. So that already, according to the Sheva Miswot Menach, makes that person liable for the punishment of mitha, of being put to death. However, you can't just put a person to death without bringing him before a court. עונשו של כל אחד ואחד, כמו שאותו עימך שמו, אותו אחד מייסד בנצרות, אותו אחד מה שקורה איתו למעלה, עכשיו נאמר את הגמרא בגיטי מאוזן, נאמר שם הגמרא, דנים אותו בצוער או תחת, חבילה של צוער, של פסולת שיוצאת מהקיבה של בני האדם, 
וחתולים, וכלבים, ואריות, ונמרים, רותחת, מבעבעת, שמה שמים אותו, שמה הוא נענש כרגור רגע ורגע. זה חבל, את זה לא הבאתם, אה? כל הכנסיות, כל הצלבים שלהם, הצלב הגדול הזה על הארו בברזיל, מתפוצץ לרסיסים, לכל העולם, וכולם יראו את זה. כולם יראו את זה. ולהוציא את השקר של כולם החוצה. את השקר של הנצרות הזאת החוצה, שבשם כביכול בורא עולם, בשם כביכול יש לו כתפיים רחבות, הוא לוקח את העוונות של כולם. של כולם, את העוונות של כולם הוא ייקח. שום דבר, כולכם תהיו נקיים, כולכם תבואו לשתם שם בנטל. איזה שטויות, כמה דפר בן אדם יכול להיות, כמה סתום בלום, כמה דביל ומפגר, אין מילים אחרות. We will rebuild the third temple, we will do animal sacrifices again, and God will give us the whole of, of Israel all the way up to the Euphrates River and down to the Nile River. We'll have the greater Israel that we've always dreamed of, and we won't have to believe in Jesus to get it. That's what you guys, are, maybe you'll be alive, hopefully you'll be alive to see it, but that's the truth. When the Messiah comes, um, that non-Jews will end up being like slaves to Jews and things like that. Is that part of, like, where does that come from? That's that, then. what you're saying is correct. What you're saying is correct. And what does it mean? Yavducha Amim. Yavducha Amim. Yishtach Abu Lechalumi. Yavducha Amim. It says here, Yavducha Amim. The lands will work for you. Yavducha Amim. See it? Okay. Well, I'll ask in English. Do you believe that the Gentiles, the Goyim, will one day become the slaves of the Jews. So I believe it's, it's gonna, it's part of the Torah. Okay. Uh -huh. And they don't want the Jewish person to uh, work. Do you think that the Goyim are the Jews of the Jews? They are supposed to be. אוקיי, מה זאת אומרת, כאילו, אמורים להיות? לפי מה שכתוב בתורה, הגויים אמורים להיות העבדים שלנו. אוקיי. אני יודע במשך כל השנים מה העם הכי נרדף. מצד שני, כשמשיח יבוא, העם הכי נבחר אחרי כל מה שקרה לו במשך כל השנים. האם אתה מאמין שהגויים יהיו עבדים של היהודים יום אחד? כן, זה כתוב בתורה. אוקיי, okay. ומה זה אומר? כל מה שכתוב בתורה אני מאמין. כן? ומה כתוב? כתוב בפירוש שהגויים יהיו עבדים שלנו? כשאתם חושבים על ירושלים בעוד עשר שנים. כולם חרדים? כולם חרדים? לא כולם חרדים. 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 בגלל ביטול עבודות החוקית, אז נוצרו מגרעות עכשיו, כי אין, אין, אין אחריות על הנכס הזה. בעזרת השם זה יחזור. הם ירצו הגויים להיות עבדים שלנו. זהו הרב אליעזר קשתיאל, ראש ישיבת בני דוד בעלי. הכי טוב להיות עבד של יהודים. הם שמחים להיות עבדים, רוצים להיות עבדים. הישיבה הזו מיועדת לבוגרי המכינה הקדם צבאית, המוכרת והיוקרתית בציונות הדתית. רבים מהם מגיעים אליה לאחר שהם מסיימים שירות צבאי. במקום שהוא יהיה סתם מסתובב ברחובות ועושה שטויות ואלימות ומזיק אחד לשני, עכשיו הוא יהיה עבד, החיים שלו מתחילים להתנהל. לפי הרב קשתיאל, האדונים הם היהודים, העבדים הם הערבים. חלוקה לא מקרית זה עניין ביולוגי, בעיות גנטיות. יש מסביבנו עמים כאלה, בעיות גנטיות. תשאל ערבי פשוט, איפה אתה רוצה להיות? הוא רוצה להיות תחת הכיבוש. למה? כי הם לא, יש להם בעיה גנטית, הם לא יודעים לנהל מדינה, הם לא יודעים לעשות כלום. תראה איך הם נראים. עכשיו, הגויים מה שהם, כן? אלוקים עשה אותם בשביל שיעשו פה... בשביל, ש... בשביל ל... 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 לשרת את היהודים. כל הגויים שאתה רואה ש... שיש בעולם, מהמיליארדים האלה, mm -hmm. הם הכל רק בשביל... שהיהודים יהיה להם איזה תועלת מהם. עכשיו, היות ואנחנו בגלות... אנחנו לא רואים את זה, אנחנו לא יודעים בדיוק. היות ואנחנו בגלות, אז אוטומטי עדיין הם עוד לא משרתים אותנו לגמרי, רק חלקית. כל אחד יהיה... כשמשיח יבוא, אז כל אחד יהיה לו... יהיה לו אלפים עבדים. בינתיים, המשיח לא כאן, אז איך הם משרתים אותנו? הם בונים לנו רכבים, דירות, בניינים, חשמל. למי הם בונים את זה? לנו. שרתים את היהודים